my channel today we're going to be tapping into the eclipse energies doing a little collective reading astro update on what you can expect for this new moon solar eclipse new moon happening in taurus solar eclipse happening on the taurus scorpio axis so the quickest and easiest way to figure out how this is specifically going to be affecting your life is by knowing your rising sign and then knowing what house that Taurus and Scorpio rule in your chart. For example, I'm a Sag rising. So this rules over my sixth house of work, health, routines, coworkers, things like that. Um, along with my 12th house of kind of the subconscious, things like that. So that's where you're going to be able to focus on what specific area of life this is affecting, but let's get into kind of what it's gonna be affecting. Now, in general, Scorpio and Taurus rule over the financial sectors. So Taurus being kind of our finances, values, possessions, it's the material, it's like the body. So it's even representative of our own independent self-worth, whereas Scorpio is kind of like joint finances. It is the death transformation um trauma house like you know represents the occult but it's kind of um a more codependent house if we want to say that because it talks about kind of intimacy it's like what we share with other people so whatever's happening during this eclipse season it's really releasing um attachments and leveling up our own self-worth or you know things that are happening that are going to be leveling up leveling us up in that area so it could be that you have like an influx of finances coming in it could be that you are in the process of detaching but it's kind of going to be more maybe during that full moon and scorpio phase but some of the significant parts of this eclipse is that this eclipse is going to be conjunct uranus which gives it kind of this unexpected energy surprise energy like things happening that we could never expect being at the right place the right time the good thing about this eclipse is that it's ruled by the depositor the ruler of the new moon taurus new moon is venus which venus is currently exalted in pisces it's conjunct neptune and it's conjunct jupiter so it's kind of giving it like a fortunate boost, this lucky energy. So it's kind of symbolic of being in the right place, the right time. Um, so I like this eclipse season more than other eclipse seasons, <laughs> just because we're kicking it off with this Taurus new moon and it's going to be really highlighted favorably with that Venus depo dispositor. But, you know, as always, eclipses are kind of chaos energy it's definitely redirection change especially with the fact that we're going to be moving into um, mercury retrograde on the 10th uh with that full moon in scorpio happening may 15th but let's dive in let's get some collective readings on predictions and things that we can expect for this new moon in taurus solar eclipse so the song i got on shuffle was loyalty by kendrick lamar rihanna so i feel like there could be like a rededication to something or like loyalty to self loyalty within partnerships that could be the theme right um and yeah let's let's pull some cards if as always if you're interested in like a more personalized reading from me be sure to check out the link in my description box um be sure to check out my website or follow me on instagram because i'm always kind of releasing specials here and there over via my stories all right so let's kind of get into the reading aspect so loyalty loyalty is going to be on the table you might be questioning somebody's loyalty somebody might be displaying their loyalty to you so let's see what's going on during this new moon eclipse what's happening 
for this new moon eclipse. We have don't stop. A miracle is around the corner. So perseverance here. Let's continue. We have peace, harmony, and contentment. One more. One more. I love that dove. I feel like there's like a purity here. Joy, your inner child is here to play. So positive energies so far. We have freedom, spread your wings. Um, it feels like there is a little bit of play energy here. It does feel like, you know, now is the time for these miracles to happen with Venus conjunct Jupiter in Pisces. This is such a favorable aspect to be supporting this new moon. I'm telling you, there's like a lot of blessings, a lot of good fortune, a lot of unexpected surprises, but like positive surprises. Uh, um, let's dive into the moonology cards. What is happening during this new moon eclipse? What can we expect here? bring love into the situation. So I feel like there is a lot of love energy here. I mean, Jupiter being the planet of expansion, good fortune, conjunct Venus, we're getting that kind of boundless effect in terms of like love, um, balance, spirituality and practicality. Let's get one more. So there might be a need to stay grounded here. Step out of your comfort zone. Mm. North node. So Mm, I love that destiny. So there might be a need to stay grounded here this weekend because like I and this is like the Venus Neptune Jupiter conjunction is a lot of synchronicity. So you might feel really kind of in that boundless spiritual energy. So just remember to stay grounded this weekend. Um, with the step out of your comfort zone, I feel like you're going to be invited to do something you don't normally do. Um, and like you're being urged to, if like there's like, say yes, just say yes. <laughs> Urge to, to just say yes to something. If you're invited to do something and you're on the fence about it, just say yes. Cause that's kind of like that unexpected, you know, you never know when the blessing's gonna show up or where it's gonna show up. So making yourself available for it. So let's get bottom of the deck energy here. We have the moon. All right, the moon. The moon can talk about illusions. It can talk about deeper emotions. It can talk about subconscious fears. I do feel like we are going into a, I think this is representative of this eclipse season where we're kind of going into the dark. We're going in blind. We don't know what's gonna happen, okay? But we know it's gonna be you know, stay on your toes. <laughs> Universe is like, stay on your toes. Like not everything has been revealed yet, but it will be. Um, especially with the placements of these full moons of Pisces and Scorpio, things will be revealed, okay? Um, anything that you've been in the dark about by the end of eclipse season, will be very clear to you. So let's see, overall energy coming in for the Eclipse, we have the Temperance card. Um, so this can represent Sag energy here. We've got some healing, we've got some, a need for patience. Um, with this though, it's definitely, there's some divine guidance happening here. You know, you're being guided. Things are happening as they should. So that's kind of like the surrender and release control. <clears throat> Why is the temperance card here, please? Why is the temperance card here? The four of cups. So you might be healing from something. I want one more here. Ooh, the three of swords. So there might be like a healing taking place here. If you've been in this energy of like disappointment or with the four of cups feeling like maybe you missed out on an opportunity here and you're still kind of hung up about it, it feels like this is getting integrated or healed or something. There's something that's healing here that you've been kind of like, if you've been sitting in this energy, I feel like there's something shifting around this. So let's see, we have the Fool card. Um, we have the Four of Crystals and 
We have the King of Swords. All right. So the Fool card here, Star Seed. This is all about new beginnings, taking some kind of leap of faith here. That's that step out of your comfort zone, taking a risk. What is a star seed doing here, please? The king of pentacles. Okay. Star seed, king of pentacles. We have the four of crystals here. So here's the interesting message. I feel like if you've been working on creating this stable foundation, if you've been like, there's something that I feel like you're taking a leap towards, or there's some kind of new beginning that's happening for you in regards to comfort zone. Cause like with the King of Pe Pentacles, I see him as somebody who's like really committed, really consistent. If we want to talk about loyalty, it's like somebody who's committed, consistent, who's very like routine oriented. Like, let's go with some Taurus energy here for this. There's a, I mean, we have the new moon in Taurus. So, I mean, that makes sense to me. It's this new beginning happening, but there's going to be a change to your normal routine or normal consistency in regards to whatever aspect of life that, say, this new moon is highlighting for you. Because it doesn't just have to be like, work. It could be something like a new mindset or something that maybe you've held for a really long time. Because remember, Taurus is that fixed energy. So it really doesn't change. It rarely changed. Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, very fixed energies. They're very rooted, grounded energies. Don't change often. Looks like there's something that's going to change that has been a consistent for you. King of Swords. What is the King of Swords doing here, please? Ten of Swords. So this is somebody coming in and communicating, I feel. This is somebody coming in and communicating after, like, you know, um, painful endings. Painful endings that could have taken place. What is this? Oh, the Page of Cups. Interesting. So I do feel like there's somebody coming in to have a serious conversation with you. This could be like, sorry, I self-sabotage or like explaining some kind of painful ending that they had to go through. It's like this page of cups here is sort of an offering. It's sort of like an offering of like, like it could be an apology here. It could be something along those lines. But what the four of crystals is telling me is that the energy between you and whoever or whatever the situation is, is very guarded, closed off. Um, like somebody may have had to overcome their thoughts or self-sabotage in order to come forward and even offer this little token of love. So that, that could be like a message here. Let's see. Um, and this could be somebody who has felt they missed an opportunity with you. If we're talking love, but take it however it resonates. It could be in regards to career and things like that. Don't force the narrative. But it could be that there was a missed opportunity here based off of self-sabotage. And this person has is healing that. Is healing that feeling of Mm, disappointment from missing said opportunity and they're kind of either there's a opportunity that's going to be represented for you after doing this to yourself or say in love same situation we've got the king of cups here we've got the eight of crystals we've got a lot of kings on the table okay lots of kings on the table and we have the wheel of fortune here's this venus jupiter energy okay this is fate, wheel of fortune, forward movement. The wheel is turning. King of cups. What is the king of cups doing here? The magician. Interesting. This tells me, this is like following my, following your heart. Because if we're shifting from the king of pentacles to the king of cups. And notice how in this deck, the king of cups is holding two cups, but he's focused on one. So this can mean like, you know, finally making a choice, finally making a decision. 
And the magician here is kind of like, you know, the manifester making something happen, but making something happen from that heart energy, that heart space energy. The eight of pentacles. This can represent, you know, work, effort, abundance. What is the Wheel of Fortune doing here, please? Wheel of Fortune. The Empress. Wow. Let me get one more for this. The Wheel of Fortune. Empress. Whoa, the Hierophant. Um, wow. Wow. So the Wheel of Fortune to the Empress to the Hierophant. So we've got, Tor there's Taurus energy here. We've got our Venusian energy here with the Empress. And the Empress is such a fertile card. It's new beginnings. It is, it is like giving birth to something. This gives me the vibe of, if we're talking about love, okay? If we're talking about relationships, this is somebody that is moving past some kind of self-sabotaging cycle. They're offering you some kind of apology here or some kind of token. And their spirit, the universe, is pushing them towards a new beginning in this connection that involves nurturing this connection into some kind of commitment. And this could also be, um, just to give all the options here, of what could be possible because this could all be you you know having a second opportunity to really to really nurture something to really commit to really um commit to this higher purpose higher power and it's like an offer an offer for that commitment an offer to could be work-based but it's like an offer to make an effort let's work towards this together with the King of Cups and the Magician here, this feels like you're actively manifesting. What are you manifesting? The Devil card, interesting. So Capricorn energy here. Um, for me, this feels like material it feels like something material and like i said with the devil card it's funny that it's always capricorn when in reality i always consider taurus to be more because taurus is like the senses taurus is material taurus is like you know they're rooted they ruled the house of the senses which is like you know the pleasure house okay and like the Venus is the morning star, which is the devil, right? So I always see Taurus as more as like that indulgent energy, which is kind of devil-like. So I do think you're manifesting something material, but there could be like a contract here that you're manifesting, um, like a soul contract, some kind of karmic energy that you are calling in. Karmic energy doesn't have to be bad. It's just that there's some kind of attachment here. Look at this, the Four of Wands. So this can talk about union. Some of you might be manifesting a new home and that's the commitment here. Um, but see how we go from the Four of Crystals to the Eight of Crystals? Whatever this is, it's like doubling your efforts, right? It's like, but it's like a combined thing. So I'm like, are you putting two houses together? Take that metaphorically or literally. Like it's like taking two foundations and blending them with the eight of pentacles because we go from four to eight. Um, so it's like two people coming together, but two people having separate lives, right? Or having separate foundations, but joining foundations. That makes sense. Um, Ten of crystals. The Four of Swords. So it's interesting that we have two fours and then the eights in the middle. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, I have my thing, you have your thing, but we're putting our things together, right? Um, seven of Cups and the Star card. So very Piscean energy here with the Seven of Cups. The Star card. Somebody's daydreaming. Somebody's fantasizing. Somebody has a lot of hope here. Somebody's wishing and hoping. Wishing and hoping and praying. Mm -hmm. What song is that? 
What is the Ten of Crystals doing here? Ten of Crystals. Some of you are manifesting a new home. Um, we have the Nine of Crystals. Ten of Crystals, Nine of Crystals. Some of you are going to be doing something independently. Doesn't have to mean that you're not in your connection. Because remember what I said. I have my thing, you have your thing. But we're putting our things together, all right? Some of you are going to be independently creating something for yourself. Uh, uh, uh. I'd be interested to know if some of you are going to move in with somebody. Because this feels like with this Four of Swords, there's like some kind of pause here, some kind of rest period um, between the two of you. But you're both kind of, I mean, your person's thinking a lot they're daydreaming a lot lots of hope lots of daydreams lots of wishing um and with you you're kind of like in this really abundant energy what is this ten of crystals nine of crystals the high priestess so intuitively you might already know like you might already know what what this is Awakening. Oh, yeah, you might be having some kind of epiphany. You might be having some kind of spiritual epiphany with the awakening. That's the judgment card. But paired with the high priestess, this to me is like a calling. Like maybe you're getting a receiving a calling or something very divinely guided, very spiritual, but it's manifesting for you in the material. It's manifesting for you in the material. So some of you who work in the spiritual field you might start making way more money doing what you're doing um but something here is manifesting for you in the material what is the seven of cups and the star card doing here what is this person wishing and hoping for the hermit enlightenment what is this person wishing and hoping for Virgo energy. What is this person wishing and hoping for? The Knight of Crystals. Ooh, the Queen of Crystals. An offer that's good enough for you um, to bring in stability for you. This person is looking, this person's wishing and hoping for inner peace, inner contentment, inner enlightenment, um, groundedness. They want to be really grounded. They're 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 looking for worthiness as well. I feel like you're in a little bit of a pause connection with the Four of Swords, um, taking a time out from one another. But it doesn't have to be that it's like an actual time out. It's kind of more like I'm going inwards, you're going inwards. We're building our own foundations, and then we're pulling our foundations together. So this can talk about collaboration. It can talk about things. What is this Four of Cups, Three of Swords here? This is healing past wounding, past traumas. What is happening here? What is going on here? Yeah, the death card. Ending a cycle. Ending, putting a close to any hurt or pain from the past. Um, look, the world card. Closing out a cycle. Closing out a cycle here. So this Page of Cups, what does this person want to communicate here? What is this person coming forward to communicate? The King of Wands. What is this person coming forward to communicate? The Knight of Wands. Ooh, taking action. They're ready to take action here towards what? Two of Crystals. Two of Crystals to the Three of Crystals. Like movement forward to grow, to build. Um, what is this person? Mm, eight of wands. That's fast action. Okay. To 10 of pentacles. If this person's been in two minds about something, they are about to be taking, taking pretty fast action. This could even be travel with the eight of wands here. This is fast movement because king of wands, knight of wands, this king of wands is taking action here. Two of crystals, if they've been in a decision, they're moving in a direction. They've been they've been building up something and they're moving in. What direction are they moving in? The chariot card. Oh wow. 
Are you guys gonna meet in the middle somewhere? Maybe meet in the middle with somebody? But this chariot card is like fast forward movement towards success, but also, and remember, this doesn't have to be a person. This could be you gaining some kind of clarity and enlightenment and things are about to pick up speed and with the chariot card. But for some of you, this is somebody coming, traveling towards you. What is, give me King of Crystals star seed. What's happening here? Ah, wow, okay, wow. We have the Seven of Wands and the Lovers card. But you're both moving towards one another, which is the thing, which is where I'm like, meet in the middle. We're meeting in the middle and we're joining forces. The Lovers card here is like that union, right? Um, Seven of Wands is all about the perseverance, which is don't stop a miracle is right around the corner. This could be also, you know, closing out a cycle and you like, this could be you meeting somebody. You might not even know this person. You might not even know this person. Um, and this is a very like, it's like you meet each other in kind of a happenstance. Sort of a happenstance. What is... Yeah, Six of Pentacles. It's like unexpected blessings, unexpected opportunities. What is this person coming in and communicating though? What is that Page of Cups? Emperor, whoa. Lots of fire, y'all. Lots of fire. Emperor and the Six of Swords. This makes me feel like somebody who is coming from overseas. <laughs> somebody who's contacting you online or coming in from a distance, like it feels like they're leaving something behind in order to come forward. But with the emperor card here, this person's very determined, very fixated, very fixated. Whether you know this person or not, if you don't know this person, you will know this person by how determined they are. And they just moved on from, they just left behind a really painful cycle in their life. So it could be that they, recently got divorced or metaphorically they disconnected from something um what is this wheel of fortune empress and hierophant here please three of cups what is this tower card the ace of wands wow okay one more um the nine of swords so i feel like the three, again, this is a very, this is a very expressive, creative energy to me, like creation energy with the three can be communication of feelings or, you know, the tower card being here with the ace of wands. This is something that comes in. Why is that tower card there? This is something that comes in unexpectedly but I wouldn't take it as uh, like something that maybe you've been anxious about or restless about. This is like losing sleep over it, but there's something like really fortunate that happens. I feel like the message here to remember through eclipse season is that no matter what happens, um, it's going to be for the best. Everything that happens now is going to be for a better future. So I'm going to pull I'm going to pull one of the hidden truth cards before I move into the extended where I'll pull some archetype cards. We're going to get really specific on this energy that's showing up. We'll pull some tarot cards. We'll pull some archetype cards. I'm going to pull from the sexual tarot and I have a couple different decks of messages that I'll pull from. But let's see for those who resonate with this being a person. What does this person want to communicate? I hide my feelings. Hmm. One more. I wonder how you feel. <laughs> so I hide my feelings. I wonder how you feel. Let's get one more. I don't know what comes next. So this is interesting because um, I feel like with the I hide my feelings, I wonder how you feel. It's like, I feel like somebody has been trapped in their emotions. They're not communicating what they should, but there's something that's about to change about that. And that I don't know what comes next. It's like this person kind of doesn't know how to open up, but like the universe is about to open up them up or put them in a situation 
where they have to open up. Um, so I feel like that's what you can expect here. Uh, like major epiphanies, major awakenings that's going to kind of force these feelings out into the open um, or force this conversation out into the open or com something to happen that's going to create like action and movement here. So if you're interested in that extended, we will dive a lot deeper into this. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description box and I will see you there. Bye.